Have you ever thought about what might happen to you, if you went sleepless for 30 days non-stop? During World War II, every nation like USA, Germany, England were looking for ways to succeed in the war. Likewise Russian scientists came up with a strategic weapon, which they called, Russian Sleep Experiment. The group of scientists set out to find out the results of 30 sleepless days and nights. So that the Russian soldiers could stay awake day and night, to fight the war and have a competitive advantage over other nations. It was during this period, that the researchers believed, they had created a stimulant capable of keeping a soldier sleepless for a long time. However, before they could consider it safe enough to be given to the Russian soldiers. They decided to test it on a few human subjects. And since it was during the World War, finding test subjects wasn't a hassle as there were plenty of war prisoners. The researchers designed the scientific experiment to run for 15 days, upon which they shall have discovered if they could use it on their soldiers. While the gas chamber, where this stimulant would be released was under prep, five prisoners of war were misinformed, that if they could make 30 days within the gas chamber, then later they'll be set free. The prisoners agreed to it. The researchers locked up the prisoners in a sealed chamber. Running water, a toilet, and a bed but without bedding, were made available in the chamber. The researchers continuously checked the stimulant gas to the test subjects to make them stay awake. At the same time, they would monitor if the oxygen levels were fine. For the first three days, everything seemed okay, and the gas was doing its job as expected and the prisoners seemed to be normal too. On the fourth and fifth day, the prisoners started talking about the traumatic incidents they had faced in life. Apart from talking to themselves, they started seeing things that weren't there. Also, they became paranoid about their fellow prisoners, and would often whisper on the microphones in the chamber, about other test subjects. After nine days, one subject began screaming uncontrollably for hours while the others did not react to his outburst. The man screamed for so long that he tore his vocal cords. When the second one started screaming, the others prevented the researchers from looking inside by pasting torn book pages and their own feces on the porthole windows. A few days passed without the researchers being able to look inside, during which the chamber was completely silent. It was on the 15th day that the researchers decided to open the chamber, only to meet a horrific result. One of the prisoners was no more. Surviving four prisoners had eaten their own flesh, and refused to leave the chamber, and also refused to fall asleep. Later another subject was no more. And the remaining three were being treated for their injuries, in preparation for returning to the chamber. However, a shocking discovery by the EGG monitor showed that each test subject was brain dead. Now, do you think Russian sleep experiment is real? Did it actually take place? I don't have an answer either and it still remains a mystery. What do you think about this experiment? Do leave a comment. In 1948, Demikhov conducted research to show that one creature's blood flow system can support another creature, like attaching an extra head, as the brain needs lots of blood and oxygen to work properly. In that same year, he wrote papers about surgical combination of two animals with the creation of a single circulation. He was doing all of this in the name of science and to offer better alternatives to those that have problems with their organs. Between 1954 and 1959, there were a total of 24 surgeries conducted, with the 24th surgery being the most promising attempt of them all. In this 24th attempt, Demikhov selected two different dogs. He named the larger dog Brodyaga, which means, tramp, in Russian, and the smaller dog Shavka. In this procedure, Brodyaga served as the host, and Shavka provided the neck and head that would be attached to Brodyaga. The plan involved removing the lower part of Shavka's body to maintain her own heart and lungs connected until just before the procedure. Simultaneously, an incision would be made in Brodyaga's neck, where Shavka's upper body, including the head, neck, and upper limbs, would be attached. The remaining part of the surgery focused on rebuilding the blood vessels. After a day of healing, 
the two-headed dog was in excellent condition, especially when compared to the previous 23 attempts. The surgery itself lasted only three and a half hours, and after one day of recuperation, both heads regained their sensory functions, including hearing, smelling, seeing, feeling, and tasting. Sadly, this two-headed dog lived only for four days due to a vein accidentally being damaged in the neck. Demikhov believed that, had this accident not occurred, the dog could have potentially survived for up to 40 days. While these surgeries didn't have practical medical applications at the time, they served as a significant step in expanding our understanding of the medical field. Pyotr Naskreki found himself riddled with tiny parasites under his skin, when he traveled to Belize last year. Several human botflies infected him through mosquito bites. Botfly eggs are so small that they are often laid on mosquitoes. When the mosquito bites, the eggs simply fall off, go into the flesh, where they start growing protected by the host's skin. This type of infection can be very dangerous for humans as well as other mammals. Naskreki carefully extracted most of the parasites using a tiny venom extractor, when he realized he was infected. He noticed the many rows of spines the tiny larva had developed in order to grip onto his insides. However, he then did something only a very brave scientist could do, that is, he left two larvae under his skin, allowing them to grow. So that he could monitor their growing process. He said that, it took two months for the larvae in his skin to reach the point where they were ready to emerge. The process took about total 40 minutes. It was not particularly painful, in fact, he probably would have not noticed it if he had not been waiting for it, as the botfly larvae produce painkillers that make their presence as unnoticeable as possible. Botflies go on, living their short lives. Because the flies have basically no mouth and can't feed, they only live for a few days, enough to lay more eggs. Do you think blood from young ones can reverse some signs of aging? Like vampires that guzzle blood and then they live forever? Connecting the bloodstreams of old and young mice can extend the lifespan of the older creatures by about 6 to 9 percent, according to recent research. In a procedure that sounds like a vampire's dream, a team of scientists surgically connected pairs of living mice so that blood could circulate between them. After three months with their bodies fused together, the animals were unstitched and studied for the effects on their longevity. The results show older mice's lifespans tended to get a boost after the animals were linked to a young partner, when compared to older mice that had been connected to an old partner. Even two months after sharing the young blood, older mice had more youthful levels of molecules known to reflect aging. While this conjoining procedure, called parabiosis, that is connecting young and old individuals has shown promise for reducing aging in previous animal research. Researchers have found that the procedure seems to make several organs, including the brain and the heart, appear younger for their age in mice. After the procedure ended, scientists looked at the animal's biological age, or the age of their cells and tissues based on molecular markers in the blood, liver, and DNA. The bodies of older mice that have been connected to a younger individual seem to age less quickly than expected. The younger mice in the experiments showed signs of accelerated aging after being disconnected from their older counterparts. Damage to the youngsters can disappear over time, while the rejuvenating effects on the older mice are permanent. <laughs>